Good afternoon, uh, guys, and thank you for joining our Spring Mock News Conference. Um, we are going to separate it into two sections as usual today. We have Rassi Erasmus on, who will be on for about 20 minutes. Uh, he will then be followed by Andre Pollard and Kaylin Moody. Uh, so um, please just raise your hands for questions, and then we'll just keep time and, and, and let you know when um, we are running out of time for questions for, for Rassi and then for the players as well. So hands up for questions. Thank you. Hi, Rassi. Hello. How are you? Good and you? Good, thank you. From New Zealand, Television New Zealand. Um, New Zealand have been IT for referee. You're down here. How unique a situation is that, given the referee last year? Uh, not so unique. In, I think in 2019 we had Jerome Garces in the first pool game versus New Zealand, which we lost. And then we had him in the, the Wales uh, semi-final and then we had him in the final. So I don't think it's that unique. Um, we also had been earlier this year against uh, Australia and we also had him against Ireland, which we lost. So um, yes, we've won some with him, lost some with him. Um, and I'm sure um, the English team has had him somewhere uh, the last two years as well. Uh, but yes, yeah, we, we're comfortable with uh, the way he referees. And um, yes, I guess for, for it's good to have a referee that you, you've had before. I, I know you've been firmly focused on England, hmm. but is there any part of your brain that moves ahead to the possibility of facing the All Blacks? Um, yes, uh, I think to talk about the All Blacks will, will be disrespectful to, to England because they have a massive, massive speed bump uh, uh, for us to get over. We're more say a portal than a, than a speed, speed, up, speed bump because uh, you know, I was just looking here at the, I'll get to New Zealand. I was just looking here at, at the possible teams that I think can play. I think we average 200 minutes per player, they 260. I think the average caps of our team will be about 54, they'll be about 59. I think the average age of our team is 30, the average age of, of the team are 29. And then the average um, you know, weight is 104 and 105. So it's two teams, um, England's unbeaten. They, um, you know, the beat, they, they stuck to their guns. Uh, um, both, both weeks since he's been appointed and um, they kept believing on what they're doing. And it's paying off, and you can see their team full of belief. And um, they will be definitely hurting from not just last year when we beat them, but also from the World Cup final in 2019. So they will be a very, very desperate team, uh, and a team which you respect. Then answering your question on the All Blacks, <laughs> you know, I don't think um, uh, us or, or England uh, um, will again like to predict who we want to play against. I think the All Blacks will be unbelievably difficult, but I think Argentina is going to make it really, really tough for the All Blacks. You know, they have that ability to pitch up on that one day where they just, in the last couple of years, beat some of the big teams uh, regularly. But uh, no, I firmly on England at this stage. Um, Razi. Hi, Charles from the Daily Telegraph here. Um, I just wondered, on 
on the back of the O'Keefe announcement today and the fact that this is going to be the third time this tournament that you've had him as you've, as you've just alluded to does that with the game with the way that the way with the way that the game's refereed now does that suit you better or does it suit England better having not had him as much of late um, well I think he looks probably at it both ways you know, he probably um, have some problems with certain areas of our games and he might be happy with some areas of our games which he has experienced. So um, I guess him looking out for us not to make the same mistakes that, we, that he maybe have missed and then on the other hand, you know, for us to try and keep doing the things that he thought uh, the pictures that we gave were, were right. So um, I, think, I think it's 50-50, you know, uh, of course he Although he hasn't, I, I can't remember when last he refereed England, but he wouldn't have a preference uh, on how they would approach the breakdown or um, how they handle scrum pictures, you know, or how they would do on the high ball. So I guess uh, it's a bit of an unknown, which, I don't know, is it positive, is it negative? Uh, I think the team that respects the referee the most on Saturday, um, and then obviously, uh, um, try and stay within the laws uh, without hopefully not um, having a rugby accidents causing cards um, and I think that's one thing that Ben has really done well in all three games that we we had him so far and I think um, both we will be as pleased um, if the game gets refereed like that. Um, just finally from me, on, on Sia and his trajectory as captain um, he's, he's very polite and diplomatic um, with referees. That's one of his sort of outstanding attributes and he, he treats them with the utmost respect. Um, how have you seen that sort of journey develop throughout his career and how important is that in the, in the modern day game and, and how important is that with the way that, with the communication and interaction between players and referees at the minute? Yeah, I think overall, um, um, I think I've said it a few times and, and I think it's well documented now, that we um, made some changes, I would say, a year and a half ago, um, after the French test match and the, and the Irish test match. Uh, we didn't just make changes in our approach to the referees, we really wanted to get somebody on board to, who's a, who's a non-South African who can help us with how people see us. Um, sometimes a lot of things get lost in translation and a lot a lot of things get lost in tone, the tone of voice. I know my, my, my tone of my voice is maybe not the, the softest or uh, sometimes it sounds a little bit, um, I sound annoyed or, uh, or maybe not as, as, as friendly as it should. And uh, we would really want somebody in. She has got the, the gift of, of, of communicating with everybody, anybody, a player, a teammate, a referee, an AR, uh, the media, he just got that gift of being friendly and uh, even though he speaks in his third language, I mean, he can speak Afrikaans and, and English, you know, he, he speaks well, he handles himself well. Um, and you know, to be honest with you, um, our whole thing has changed and as we had, I have admi admitted that uh, with the communication channels previously, the frustration on both sides, both us and World Rugby was really, really Obviously, as everybody knows, they're really, really low. Mm -hmm. And we even had to change our game plan to, to, to make sure that we can't just rely on the referees to make these tough decisions in malls and scrums and stuff. We have to have other uh, shots firing in different departments. But in short, I think it's nice for the referee or anybody who works with CR uh, because he's a friendly guy. Razi, Alex Lowe from The Times. I'd be very interested to know what that England team is you've got written down on, on your sheet. Who is the team? Yeah. Yeah, well, and I'll be guessing, obviously. Um, I don't know. We took, took the basic guys, you know, Gaines, uh, George, uh, Sinclair, Doge, Chisholm, Laws, Curry, Earl, Mitchell, Farrell, Daly, Tulagi, Marchant, May, uh, Marcus Smith, or Stewart, uh, Dan, Mahler, Cole. Uh, uh, George, uh, Billy, Ben Young, so Danny, George Ford, and Oli. That's who we think. Pardon me, might be that clear. The, um, the, the two, two moments that stood out to a lot of us in, in the last game, um, calling the, the scorn from a mark and um, the, the charge down, 
which were really effective pieces of clear, you know, coaching thought had gone into it, is one of the great values of those is, is that you can also plant a seed of doubt into the mind of, of your latest opponents who happen to be England. So Owen Farrell might have to look at how quickly he addresses the ball. England might have to look at their kicking strategy. Yeah, I think I think a lot of things get done sometimes that doesn't work, which people uh, don't even uh, pick up. Uh, and, and then you think it's hell of a good plan and then it doesn't work, but people don't even realize you did something stupid, you know. So every now and then things work out well. I think the mark worked out well because I, I think it's really to play against that big French pack and never get a scrum. You know, the last test match we had one scrum. And they kicked all the balls in the long into our 22, and, and you know, it's a free kick, so you can take a scrum from it. And, and we really want to to engage in scrum scores, not just to show dominance, but just to get the fatigue factor into both both backs. Um, uh, then the charge down. I mean, uh, not all ideas are coming from me. Jog is Jog, uh, the kicker, uh, Zondile. Uh, everybody, the players, give input, and no, uh, I think we as worried about the plans. Um, uh, the England coach and Farrell and, and all of those guys are making. You know, uh, the one game they lost, or they, or they beat, um, uh, with 14 men with a lot of drop goals. You know, that might come this Saturday, and that's something we have to uh, watch out for. So, um, no, I, I think. As many doubts we may be sowing in other teams, they're, they're doing the same with us. We're also a bit nervous about what's up their sleeves. Uh, Rossi, can I ask you uh, just to um, elaborate a bit on the potholes or the roadblocks that you see England putting in your way? Um, yeah, well, uh, firstly, uh, we are guessing the team is, is interesting with, with Marcus. You know, will he or Freddie plays? I don't know, Marcus has got this ma massive X factor, and Freddie is, is, is um, unbelievable under the high ball. Uh, you know, will Owen play inside centre and Tulagi outside, or, or will Ford play fire off and come drop call everything there? You know, um, yeah, you know, they've got Courtney there that can play lock and flank. He's been such a rocket flank for them. Uh, I mean, and with the the energy with the other two young dudes for it, uh, that shows so much in energy on the field on all departments. Uh, you know, they've got Sinclair, um, uh, Jamie, and so many experienced players that played against us last time. And I think um, because they've played us in of year last year, they played us. At the World Cup, in the World Cup final, uh, and I think they will have some beef with us. Um, uh, I think they will be very physical. I think they will definitely step it up at all set phases. And um, then I think they've got a team full of, I mean, to like himself, uh, just to stop it, him alone. It's going to be a big job uh, if he, well, no matter what position he plays. And then you never know what Farrell um, dish out on the day and the new scrum off. I'm not sure if Danny K um, or Youngs will be in the mix, but New Scrum is certainly somebody that uh, can lighten up uh, with his uh, sniping breaks around the rock. So uh, I think there's threats all over the park and it's starting to get together for both for, for weeks. Hello, Chris. Game for you guys and your opponents, especially the Springboks. I know you guys don't speak of team selection before the announcement. You mentioned yesterday that internally you guys announced the squad. Is there any need to make any changes and is there a temptation possibly to bring a player like Lucanio out back into the squad? There's a temptation to bring Lucanio back in, there's a temptation to start Andre and Faf together, there's a temptation to put Kane and Moody in the mix, uh, the way England plays. Uh, there's a temptation to go for the 6 2 split. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of temptations because we've, uh, we've got a 33 man squad which every single one is fit. Uh, so, you know, um, that's probably the reason why we're only announcing our team 48 hours before. Of uh, course, we would also like to see what England, um, which way they would go. You know, us, when France went 6 2, we went 5 3. 
Um, uh, it will be really interesting if, if England would ever consider go 6-2. We will have to adapt a little bit and uh, yes, as I say, uh, the half-back pairing and the fives might, might, might switch around. Lukan is looking really great, but so is Kainan. Uh, and then uh, in the forward pack, you know, Alexander Klein can really bring a lot to a physical game with uh, definitely two locks, uh, who's doing really well for, or long, tall, uh, physical forwards, long time, it's tall, uh, tall line out options, and Itoje, and uh, um, it's, it looks, looks difficult, and we found it difficult to get line outs against England, so all of those things are options. Obviously, my, my colleague is asking the question about are you guys not looking ahead to a possible final. Can I though ask you, outside of your squad, and you guys really should focus on what you can do internally, outside of your squad, the expectation is that the spirit marks based on your current form, you guys should easily go past England. How do you guys as leadership hype your players up for this session? You, you just mentioned that England would might want to have people. No, um, I, I think there's always uh, three realities. There's the reality what England believe, there's the reality what the world say in the media and you know, the pundits, and, and then there's uh, our reality and then there's the truth. The truth is um, England haven't lost the pool game, they didn't lose the quarterfinal, they were, were in the building states, they stuck to the guns. I don't think they got a lot of injuries. Uh, except I think one of the, the, the nines was injured and, and he couldn't uh, make the squad was it from Condominium's name now. But um, no, we would be stupid. Uh, we know we've got a six day turnaround. We travelled yesterday. Um, I think they also had a six day turnaround. And um, yeah, it will, be, it will be a game where if you look at the caps, I mean, yeah, if you look at the age, it's exactly the same, like 29, 30, 55 and 56, you know, they've managed their minutes 216, we've, we're on 200 minutes per man, you know, so it's two teams that's fresh enough, uh, there's other teams that's got in the three, 400 minutes for the players and you could see them getting injuries in certain positions, so no, um, uh, we, uh, we stay in our reality, we, what we believe, uh, what we analyse, how we train and, and here we certainly know that England will be as tough as it comes. Hi, uh, Tom here. Um, are you weighing up a 7-1 split as well this weekend? Uh, it's tough to weigh up a 7-1 with both Marnie and uh, Andre being ready now. Uh, you know, uh, uh, giving Faf and, 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 and Andre a start together is obviously very tempting. Uh, but you know, uh, having Philly also in the 23, uh, then it means a guy like uh, um, a fullback, uh, Damien Willems, uh, must probably stay out of the 23, and he's the guy who covers 10, 12, 15 for you. So I think a 6 2 is more likely, um, just because um, you know, you might have two, uh, two actual fully fit fly-offs available and you have to have a nine on the bench as well. So I think a 7-1 is out of the question. Thank you. And um, England, there are several players in the England team uh, who are likely to be playing in their last tournament and they've talked about it being a motivational factor. They want to leave on a high. Um, several of them are about towards the end of their careers. Is that something similar on your side as well? Feeling of transition and Obviously your coach is moving on at the end of the World Cup. Is that also a motivating factor for you? Yeah, I've been in the World Cup since 1999 and um, I've fell out in the semi-finals as a player in extra time against Australia and then in 2011 we fell out in the quarter-finals which is awful. You just, the next day you just get onto a plane and you all fly in different directions and you only see your teammates next year, June. A semi-final is it's terrible to, to lose the semi-final because you have to play that third and fourth place, place playoff, and you know you, it's it's it's. I've, I've played in that game as well. We played against New Zealand, and then we've won uh, a World Cup um, in 2019. So, you know, to answer your question, um, I think I look at the England squad. They've got about 12 players who's over 30, uh, and we've got 14 who's over 30. You know, so and. and Another four years, that means most of those guys are 34, 35. Um, not a lot of guys. Yes, 
the Johnny Sexton's and the Dion Faris and those kind of guys who go still 36, 37. But I guess in our group there will be a big turnaround. Uh, and the coaching side definitely, obviously Jacques and Felix is leaving. I'm not sure exactly what, what the England setup and coaching staff and, and players are retiring or not retiring. But um, at least if they lose or win in this game, they do still have a third and fourth place playoffs, playoff, so they, there's at least one uh, one other game for either us or them. But it's uh, it is definitely something that we all talk about. You know, it would be great to, to end your career on a high and not on low. Uh, good evening, Rasi Kanyisoya. Um, you've mentioned the minutes that um, the players have gone through. Um, how important does conditioning and recovery become after such a physically taxing test like we watched on Sunday in France? Yeah, it, it differs, I think, from team to team. Um, I think um, England did not have what we had. I think we played six games prior to the to the World Cup, you know, three rugby championships games and then or four, three and Argentina, that's four, uh, Argentina twice, and then we played the All Blacks and we played Wales. So we played six games and then we played four pool games. So we went strongest team mix, and then third game strongest team in the mix. And from now we're trying to pick the best team that we uh, feel can hang in there for, for